Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So those of you who have been following me on Scratch know that I said I was going to post this video a long time ago. I posted the example project a pretty long while ago, and I also said I was editing it a long time ago. And you know why? Well, this video took a really, really long time to edit. I had to edit down 50 something minutes of coding because this is a pretty hard game to code. But it's worth it because I think you guys will really enjoy this video. So if you guys appreciate my hard work in editing this, this really long video, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So here we are in our basic editor and the first thing we're going to do is rename this to Pet Shop Game. Once you have that done, you can delete the original cat sprite and go into your backdrops. And I'm going to drag out this backdrop of the pet shop that I already drew myself. It took me a pretty long while to draw, but you guys can get it into your backpacks yourselves out of mine. Then go into your costumes and get the characters, which has a lot of different kind of characters in it. Then go back in and get four different animals of your choice. I chose the rabbit, snake, chick and hedgehog once you have all of those go into each one select three costumes from each and drag them all into one sprite so you should have 12 costumes in total in this one sprite and delete all of the rest of them then the next thing you're going to do is draw a new sprite with a gray circle and two lines to make a plus symbol this is the button that the player is going to click on to add a new pet to their shop now let's get into the coding. So we have to first create some variables. The first one is going to be pet one name, then pet one type. We're going to change the pet one name to large readout by right clicking on it and then pet one type. We're just going to hide that because the player does not need to see that. Then we're going to get a one sprite click block and then if costume name equals costume one and make sure you say costume name because i forgot to do that earlier <laughs> anyway back to where we are and make sure that it says exactly what your costume name is or else it's not going to work and go into looks and have it say this spot costs 100 dollars then we will get an ask block and say would you like to buy this spot now, what if they say something other than yes or no, and we only make a condition for yes or no. So to avoid this problem, we will have it repeat asking, yeah, asking the same question until they put in exactly yes or no. So to make this, we will have it get an if, we'll first get if answer equals yes and answer equals no, then we will put that in or. So if it equals no, or yes and then put that in a not so that means it is not yes or no if it's not yes or no then repeat asking it so we'll have it repeat until it is yes or no then once we have that we will have it check whether it is yes or if it is no if it's yes then we will have it continue to purchase the so if the answer equals yes, we also need to make sure they have enough money to buy it. So let's make a money variable, which I usually just make a dollar sign. And then if that equals more than 99, then they can buy it. And if not, it'll say not enough money. So if they have it, then it'll, it'll change their money by negative 100. So it'll take that money out of their account. Then we'll have to ask another question that can only have certain answers. So we'll have it ask whether they want to buy a snake, chick, hedgehog, or rabbit. And it can only be one of those four answers. But instead of having our possible answers be yes or no, we'll just change those to rabbit, hedgehog, chick, or snake. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and drag it underneath your change money by negative 100. So now that it's asked you what kind of pet you want, we need to make it so that it will change to that costume. So we'll set the pet type to their answer, and then we'll ask what do you want to name it? Then we'll set the pet's name to their answer. 
So let's go into our costumes and as you can see, each animal has a letter after their name for their different costumes. Change each of those to a number from one to three. It has to be from one to three so that it can change to a random costume, but only of the animal that you're choosing. So when we go back to our coding, We'll go to operators and get two join blocks. In the middle, we'll put a dash, which is the dash in the costume name. Then on the end, we'll have it choose a random number from one to three, just like the three different costumes that we have of each animal. Then we'll drag in pet one type. And to test that out, we'll put in pet one type as hedgehog, run that block. Then if we click on this, it's gonna give us a bunch of different names for what it could possibly change to. And if we go into our costumes editor, we can see that those are the names of the costumes that we have. So then we'll go to looks and get switch costume to, and then drag our little block inside of that. So that will make it change to a random hedgehog costume specifically. So underneath that, we'll put a repeat until block. And then inside of that, we'll get an equals and then have it repeat until pet one name equals nothing. And I'll explain what that means a little bit later. So it will repeat changing its costume to a random costume every random three to 10 seconds. Then once that's done, it will change back to costume one, which is the plus button. Once you have that script finished, drag it in underneath where you set the pet one name and pet one type. So that's the entire process for buying a pet that you have done. Now let's make the reset pet function. So get a when I receive block and create a new message called reset pet one. When a pet is reset, that means that someone has bought it. So it doesn't have a name anymore, it goes back to the original plus button costume and you're able to buy another pet again. So what would need to go under this is set pet one name to nothing, then switch costume to costume one. And when start clicked, we'll want it to set money to 200, then broadcast the reset pet one message. Now let's test this out. If we click on our plus button, it'll tell us that this bot costs $100 and ask if we want to buy it. We'll put in yes. And then let's say we wanna buy a hedgehog and then we will name it, let's name it Louie. <laughs> so we named it Louie, we have our hedgehog and it took away 100 of our dollars. And as you can see, it's changing to a random costume but still staying a hedgehog. So that works. Now that we've got our pet finished, let's work on our customer. In our customer, let's first make their variables. We need a variable called pet one person one talking. So that will check if they are talking or not. And then we'll need pet one person one offer. So that is the offer that the customer will put in for how much they'll pay for this pet. And at the beginning, we will have it set talking to no, then set pet one name to nothing and hide. Then forever, wait a random amount from five to 15 seconds. And if the pet's name doesn't equal nothing, which means it has been named, then we'll use this function come in and then wait until pet one has been named and the person is not talking. And if that is still true after that has been sent, then it will glide out, which means it will leave the shop. For the come in function, we will define that. So that means that they'll switch to a random costume, which means they'll become a random customer, show, go to the front layer, go off screen, glide on screen, and then set their offer for that pet to a random number. Now let's make it so that the user can check what their offer is. So we'll put in when the sprite is clicked, then set this person talking to yes, and we will get three different join blocks and have them say, I would like to buy pet one name, for dollars pet one offer. So then it will say, I would like to buy this pet's name and then for how much they wanna buy it for. Then we will have it ask, do you accept my offer? And this is another yes or no question that we only want them to answer yes or no. So you can either duplicate the same conditions that we had before or make it again from scratch. And then if it is yes, then say, thanks, here's your money and it will change your money by the amount of money that they offered. Then broadcast the reset pet. 
If they say no though, it will say, okay, well, get back to me if you change your mind. And they will stay in the shop until the pet is sold. And once that is broadcasted, then we'll set if this person is talking to no. Then they will glide off screen and hide. So now we have all of the functions that will have the customer come into the shop, set their offer, give their offer, and you are able to either accept or decline it. To test this out, let's click on the start button. Then we will buy our pet. And as you can see, a customer is coming in and I can either accept or reject their offer. Now, one problem we do have though is that rabbit is huge. Like that's a really big rabbit. So you can go and change the size of your sprite to something lower, or you can go inside the costume editor and then change it yourself. I set the size of mine to 50, and then I went in and made sure that all of my pets were on the ground and they were all the right size. So now you have one working pet and one working customer. The next step would be to have your second customer. To do that, go to your first customer, right click on it and click on duplicate. We'll name them separately for person one of pet one and person two of pet one. Then we'll create new variables for pet one person two offer and pet one person two talking because each customer needs to have their own set of two variables. Now this is the tedious part. You have to go through and everywhere where it has the person one's variable, you have to change it to the person two's variable because if they get mixed up, the code will not work. You don't have to change the one where it says pet one name or pet one type because they're both using the scripts from the same pet. And if we try this out, two customers will come in, we can check both of their orders, and once pet one is sold, they both leave. So it's working now. But what about the other three spots? If you guys want to know how you can code the other three spots, make sure that you like and subscribe and tune in next week for part two of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!